Hi, here I got a 3D printed spectrometer. Right now I have a green and a red laser pointer going in there. The green's about 532, the red's 632, I think. If I cover up the red, you can see on the screen over there, a peak goes away. If I cover up the green, you can see the green peak goes away. So that was a demonstration and now I'll explain to you how this thing works and how I 3D printed all the parts and whatnot. And a lot of this is based on my last video from the CCD, the TCD 1304 by Toshiba. I mean, once you got that, the spectrometer is the easy part. I'm actually currently trying to make it into a Raman spectrometer, but it's so hard to filter out the Rayleigh scattering, and I don't want to pay $200 for a long pass filter that's really, really good. So if anybody got any suggestions on how to do Raman on this cheaply, well, that's much appreciated. So let's get into it. I'll uh, show you how it was built. Okay, so here's the spectrometer, and right here is the green laser pointer, and right here is the 50-50 beam splitter, and right here is the red laser pointer. I'm putting 5 volts to the red laser pointer right now. And right here is the lens to focus the light into a slit. So there's the slit. I can't tell if you can tell on the camera but I mean the green and red are mixing in there and it kind of looks yellow it's 50-50 beam splitter so there's two spots going on the back wall there and I mean I 3d printed the uh, these little breadboard pieces here and I 3d printed these post base holders and these post holders and the post and this is the laser pointer and I 3D printed the beam splitter holder. And you can finally adjust the pointing of the laser with this. I have screws on the back. It's, uh, if you're familiar with the KM100s from Thor Labs, uh, it kind of works in the same way. So like right now I'm fine tuning the, uh, that adjustment. And you can see I'm completely oversaturating uh, the CCD which not great and I bumped the red laser so it's not pointing in there anymore um, let me try to get it pointing back in there it's there a little bit um, but okay so there's all the walls this is the STM32 microcontroller and that's hooked up to my computer and that's how the computer is receiving the data that the CCD is outputting and I did not 3D print a roof for this yet. That's why I have this book on there. So let's take this book off and I'll show you inside here. Okay, so here's like a little overhead view. This is just a stage I'm not using for anything. I'm also not using this. This is a, a filter, a cheap filter I tried to buy to filter out the 532 light, but uh, and I mean, the filter actually works pretty good, but the 532 laser is not very monochromatic. It's not a very sharp line, so um, that's why I'm really struggling to do ramen with it. Um, okay, so first thing, the light is focused into the spectrometer with this focusing lens here. I'm just using a 4x objective from my microscope. There's my microscope there. Um, so it's an adjustable slit. Maybe I can show you here. Probably can't tell. But, uh, see I can open it there. And then I can close it there. Oh god, I'm really oversaturating the detector now. Okay, um, yeah, so I pretty much closed it down all the way. There's nothing going in now. Anyways, I got that out of a, uh, 
uh, what are they called, spectroscope. I kind of took it apart and just, that's where I got that slit from. And it's adjustable. And there's the back side of the slit. And let's see, I'll open a little bit, see if we see some light coming in. There we go. Okay. And right here is the collimating lens. So the light is focused down to the slit and then it comes out and it's diverging, you know, in this sort of manner. And then it hits this lens and then all the light gets collimated and there's a uh, diffraction grating right there. A cheap diffraction grating that I bought. And the light hits there, it gets spectrally dispersed, goes onto this lens, um, and the light's still collimated. So then once it hits this lens, it gets focused onto the CCD, which I have right there. And uh, you can see it's all very modular. I can move both lenses, I can move the CCD, and I also made a, X, a YZ translation stage for the CCD, so I can get the CCD in just the perfect position. Um, and I can send anybody files if they request it. Um, I might just put it somewhere anyways and have them public. Um, but a lot of the stuff I got I uh, downloaded SolidWorks parts from Thor Labs and uh, converted them to STLs and sort of used that. Um, or I took the drawings from Thor Labs and I used Blender to uh, design the 3D printed parts, like these rails. Um, I took the drawings and I might put that in the video of how I did that in a program called Blender. But uh, that's essentially it right there. Uh, I guess I can give you more details on the lenses. The lenses have a 50 millimeter focal length. Um, they're F over two. So I think that means uh, they have a 50 millimeter focal length and they have a uh, 100 millimeter diameter then um, and let's see I can take out the diffraction grating if I want to it comes out of there nice and easy um, and you can see the zeroth order light is going straight whereas the I'm collecting the first order light and that goes off at an angle there um, if I shine a white light in there, you can see a rainbow, uh, which I can't do right now. I don't have enough hands to show you that. But I have shined a white light source in there and seen the rainbow. And I mean, this thing just shows one giant um, spectrum to like a broadband source. Okay, well, that's the explanation of how that works. Just a couple things to add. Um, so I showed you the CCD, and I have another video showing how that CCD works. But essentially, the CCD needs a driver circuit, which was developed by somebody else, as Ben Rosel. Uh, I'll post a link in the description. And I mean, that was really the hardest part uh, because he programmed the firmware for the CCD driver, drew up the PCB, uh, all that nitty gritty work. So, thanks a lot for that, Esben. Um, and so, there's a circuit driving the CCD, and the CCD outputs a bunch of data, and, well, all the clocks that drive the CCD and the output data, it goes into the microcontroller there. And then from there, it goes to the computer and is displayed right there. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. I just want to show you how modular this is and how you can easily connect and disconnect components to configure it to your needs. 
So it's essentially all put together right there. But I can take this part off the spectrometer. That's the spectrometer part, and this is the incoming light source part. Um, and I can take this off. I think. Okay, no, I have to unscrew this. And I have a little translation stage here. I downloaded this from Thingiverse. It's really great. And it's like the same stuff you buy from Thor Labs, except way, way cheaper. I mean, obviously not the greatest quality. We're not going to be curing cancer with these 3D printed components, but it's a nice project that you can play around with and learn a lot from. Which is why I did it. Gives you a deeper understanding of, you know, what's going on in these sorts of things. Um, okay, so let me disconnect this here so I can show you. Okay, I got that disattached. Now you see these two things, they just come apart like that. Real easy. It's like putting Legos together. Um, I'll post a link to where I downloaded this from. I downloaded it on Thingiverse. You 3D print it, and you do a little post-processing, such as uh, drilling the holes out and tapping the holes. And then you can, I mean, you can stick screws in there. Um, I mean, it's pretty great, but the downside is it takes a while to print one of these things. So let me show you a little bit closer view here. So this is a five inch by five inch breadboard piece. It's very well put together. It's very solid. I printed it with PLA. Um, I don't remember all the settings I use. But typically for PLA, I use 200 degrees C, printing at 50 millimeters a second. Uh, and the bed is at 60 degrees C. Oh, if you're interested in the other settings, I can find them for you. Um, but the spectrometer is made up of six of these, and they're all put together. And also the walls. Let me show you the walls. They just come apart. Um, in case you need to look inside the spectrometer for some reason. So that's one of the walls right there. Um, you can see it's got like a little T-shape on the end. Kind of like an I-beam. Not a T-shape, but like an I-shape. And you know... Just throw that in there. Um, well, I don't really know what else to talk about, but I mean, there's it's great that you can 3D print this stuff and use it for op optics. Sort of 3D printing your own optomechanics is a much cheaper way than buying everything with Thor Labs. And, I mean, if you don't need the highest quality parts. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day.